Let's make a journal page look like a house using just one piece of paper. Hello and welcome to The Treasured Page. I'm Melanie and this is our quiet crafting space. Today I'm going to show you how I'm going to tackle turning one piece of photocopy paper which has been dyed or stained into a house just by folding it in half. So if you've been following along with the Builder Journal you will have seen that I've already made one on the last video which was just the template that we're going to work on and turn this into a house, a cottage or a townhouse or a summer house or even um, a beach house, something that you might find that you would want to have in a journal um, that makes you feel like a holiday or a summertime activity, some, some place where you go to be quiet, it could be any time of the year. There endless possibilities. There are so many ways that this could go that I'm just going to show you the very very basics and from there we will probably make many more because they are fun. So what we've got here is a template. It's very easy and quick to do. So that is essentially a page in a journal that you could add and um, you could even detach this and then that be something you hinge in. If you've already got a journal and you want to add a page, you could make it look like a house. So you don't have to have them attached. But this is an idea here. So just to get the symmetry right at the top, I'm bringing the two pieces together and I'm just pinching it there so that I know that that is roughly speaking the center of, of the top of my page. So I'm going to come down about two and a half inches which is going to look like this. So I'm just going to give it a little mark around about the two and a half inch mark. I think that's plenty and then that gives us a nice working space to add windows and things like that. So that's how it's going to look. We're just going to go down the two and a half. So it's six and a half centimeters roughly around there. To link up those dots and draw a line. And this is going to be covered up anyway when we decorate. So I'm just doing it to show you. So we just go from our corner here and bring it up there and bring it up there. This is just so you can understand how to get that roof shape nice and even if you want. You don't have to have an even roof. How much fun would it be to have a crooked wonky house and make it really interesting? From here you could even taper in the edge as well and do it a bit here. You'd have to leave some because you're going to be binding into the journal potentially. You need to have, you need to not cut away too much but you could taper it in just ever so slightly, lose that corner and then you could create yourself a wonky house so you could do like that let's just see what that looks like and then we could maybe taper it in a very slight bit here just that would give me enough to to sew it in um, and we'll just take off a bit here as well and then you could see you could make a wonky house and uh, that's how that would look okay so that's uh, some idea Okay, so this is a friction pen which does actually erase the ink if you just use the little rubber portion there. So I don't think I'm going to have a wonky house today, but we absolutely could have that. So that's for another time. This is, I'm just going to cut free that top triangle and do the same over here. They you could use your triangles for something else. So this ink is removed by heat. You can put your heat tool over it or you can use the little eraser provided. So this was my Frickson pen sent to me by Terry. You can get them. They are made by Pilot and it's a Frickson ball Pilot pen and this one is in purple. So these are readily available in most stationers and they are really useful for things like this. So there we go. That's the house. When you've got two of these, you can obviously link them together and you could create a booklet shaped like a house and then decorate the front and back. That could be really fun. You could make a mini journal um, out of this shape. You can also have a lining 
and then you could stick it together or sew it together and, and if you cut these two pages at the same time they will match perfectly and you would have a lining page so that would be interesting if you wanted a different texture. All right there are so many ways in which we could decorate this and the project is summertime so I'm thinking of a sunny summer holiday. I'm thinking that maybe a villa or this could be a cottage maybe it's white so I'm thinking that this lighter color is actually going to be quite nice I quite like the idea of working with white that's interesting I've got this paper here which would remind me of a beach hut so I could do a beach hut design and maybe mute down some of the colors maybe make it a bit more vintage that would be very English I could do that or I could do a whitewash house and maybe think of something more European maybe think of Greece or Turkish houses something with that white stone uh, maybe Cornish cottages with that white rippled um, cobbled stone something like that so that I think I, I think it needs to be white so we're going to have a look at doing that all right so I'm putting down the paper here and I am going to go in with some gesso and see if I can't just get a nice base, a white wash. And I think the fact that we've got a bit of pink coming through from this paper is, is nice. It'll add a depth to it. So this was just, can't remember what it was. So this could have been a beetroot dye. I think this was some of my madder root paper dye where it just didn't come out very strong but I think this is quite nice okay we'll just add in this paint I'm using paint because it will reduce the bulk and it's what I have to hand and I think if I can do a couple of layers I'll get that painted house look I'm going to add a bit of crackled paste just to give it a bit of texture I've got a Distress Texture paste which has got crackle in it and I just think that that might add to the effect that I could get. So let's just give it a little bit of texture, just a bit of rustic charm to add here. We can always add a bit later. Just put it on roughly where we think. And we'll do the same over here. Okay, I think I've really seen the end of this one. All right, let's just add a drop more paint over the top of that. Okay, and then I'm just putting a little bit more gesso over the top of the crackle place while it's wet. Hopefully it will still do a crackle here and there, but I'm not really bothered. It doesn't need to be a crackle paste. If you've got any textured paste, that would work. Applying matte medium or some glue, allowing it to dry, and then going over with some gesso. White gesso will give you a textured effect as well. So you don't need to go out buying the fancy stuff. Just put something down that could give it a bit of texture if you would like to do what I'm doing here. Okay, while my house is drying, I have found a piece of card which is off the back of a greeting card. It is not very thick, but that's the sort of thing that we could use for this. I'm going to consult my ink palette and see what blues that I have got here. So I'm just going to pull out anything blue because I want to create that lovely Mediterranean blue that you see on Greek doors and things. So this is all the blues that I have. Um, we've got Stormy Sky, Salty Ocean, um, Mermaid Lagoon and Broken China. They're all the distressed inks that I've been collecting over the last three years. They are quite old but they just seem to work and they go on and on and on because the pigment stays within the sponge and I just think that that's great. Okay, so now we want a piece of plastic or perspex. I'm going to use this. It could be a file sleeve. It could be anything, a plastic bag, uh, a backing of um, 
it could be a backing of the silicon stamps you know we get those you could use that so just grab something grab some ink and just start seeing if you can lay down some color if they're old and they're not sort of giving you enough ink you can add a shot of water to them and then that will help revive them I haven't used these in a while and then they do get warm in the craft room so I'm just going to give them all a little squirt of water that's just the sort of spray that you can get for your hair or for plants just water that's better so now we can see oh, I don't want to muddle oh no what have I done so now I have muddled the colors so I think this is salty yeah, let's just, that's why. <laughs> Don't do what I do and muddle all your colours up. That's definitely the darker one. So that's Stormy Sky and then that one we knew about anyway. Right, fine. Okay, and then uh, colours all muddled. Let's just give it a shot of water on here. Using your finger, a paintbrush or a cotton bud, anything to hand, piece of paper, just mix it in and then let's see if we can get some colour transfer over onto this piece of paper. All right, wow, there we go. It's going to be subtle when it dries. We might need to go with more layers, but with this you can. You can keep layering up and uh, drying in between. So I'm just gonna dry this off, get the heat tool on it. Okay, well that came back as a completely brilliant and unexpected result there. It looks like marbling. That's a, that, that's almost useful for a completely different project. There is a, there is a shine to this. It's a bit like a magazine print. It's got a, a silky surface. So that is how the ink has reacted on that. Um, I th I'm not sure if this is going to really do the coverage that I want now thinking about it because of the paper, but we'll keep going because it will give us an interesting texture and it will be interesting to see how it pans out if nothing else <laughs> I'll go with a darker um, blue of a stormy sky which is a more of a grey blue colour and I think I probably could even introduce a bit of brown as well but we'll get the blue right first Alternatively, if you have a piece of blue paper, <laughs> you could use a piece of blue paper. Uh, but where's the fun in that? This is all about slowing down. This is all about having a play, having a little process, using your inks in maybe a different way. Maybe you haven't thought of this before, or if you have, then you will know the technique and it'll be easy and familiar for you. But uh, this is just one way of applying colour and getting texture onto a piece of paper where you may not have that exact colour or you can't find it. It's just a fun option to have a play with and you just have to keep drying the paper in between and if you've got a hairdryer or you've got a hot sunny day this will happen very quickly. I'm just using a heat gun here and we're just looking for any water spray it doesn't need to be anything fancy just something an old cosmetic that you can now use to create your water spray and you have that on your craft table so that you can have a go at something like this and just keep building up the colour and you can move this around if you're not happy you can make the the paper wet and you will be able to lift the colour and move it around and the more layers you have the more interest you'll you'll find you'll get and you just keep the colour moving about where you want it and each layer that you put on brings a little bit more depth which is ultimately going to look more fun and more intriguing. It's going to look more fun on the final result to have the layers of colour and there's just this is one technique of how to get it on 
to a page, piece of paper. And this is why whenever we're doing something really interesting, it's so much fun to add the layers because each layer brings its extra depth. And so you can see that you've got different colors appearing there just by manipulating a few blue inks around. And this doesn't have to be this range at all. It just needs to be water-based. So not an archival, not a stays on not um, an oil-based uh, permanent ink, it needs to be water-based and then you will be able to do this with any ink that you can get your hands on. I am just using what I have to hand and I went to town several years ago and bought the Distressed Ink range. So I have been using them for years without any problem at all. If you've got spray inks in an oxide, you could, uh, you could try that. We could try a faded jeans colour. That could be fun. I probably could have done it directly on there, but I'm thinking that this is quite Faded good. Faded jeans in the oxide. And let's just add that in and see where that takes us. Wow. So that's an interesting one. What I'm trying to achieve is a, an old door from, from Greece. <laughs> An old traditional Greek door, that's what we're looking for. Okay. Just build up the colour, just keep going. That is the mantra around here. Patience, patience, keep going. Slow down, have a look at what you can do. Just be in amazement about how time and patience and re repetition can really make all the difference to a project and bringing the depth, a depth of colour that you will not get from decorative papers that you can get in a pack. Okay, and you too could look like an extra from the new Avatar film if you do this so you might want to put on some rubber gloves there is always a danger uh, that you are going to smurf yourself okay here we are looking good i'm going to now think about the door i think i'm going to have three windows across the top and then a door down here yeah, let's just eyeball this we could use the guillotine here but um, it's a small piece so we should be okay and then i think i can get I think I can probably get three windows. Let's have a look. It'd be even if I do it like that. All right, that they could be, they could work. Okay. I think I want an arch door rounded at the top, and I found this. So we just find something round. And then we can make a mark and turn this into an archway. So I'll just make a mark around there like that. And then I'll cut that out. Cutting around the first one, I'm making a second one here, just using the first as my template on that second piece of paper. So now I've got one there and one there. We'll just neaten this up, cut them to the same size. Okay, I've got a piece of artist watercolour paper here. I think this is going to be quite good. I'm just going to put a border around the top of the roof. And so I'm going to cut some strips and just use that as a thicker piece. Oh, it looks like I've cut. Uh, looks like I've got two pages there, so that's going to work nicely. I'll just take another one as well. Just cut some strips very loosely, and then I'm going to glue those down there. All right. So I'm going to using using art glitter glue here. I'm just gluing these down. And this is just going to give a bit of a structure, a bit more border, and then I can um, 
stick that on there, trim those off in a minute and I'll probably come across here as well just to make my roof. Just go over it with a bit of gesso to just blend everything in because the colour is slightly different to the stark bleached white that we see from paper. Okay, I've just taken the edge off there. I'm going to do the same here, just take that off. So that is the back. This is going to be the front. And I'm just going to line up my windows now. And I'm thinking, so we started off thinking about Greece and the Greek houses. That's where we've got this lovely Mediterranean colour coming in. It could be Italy, it could be anything like that. I think that this is quite a nice layout. Um, alternatively, I could have it like that and round that one and have that and then put this one on the back. Let's do it like this. <clears throat> We could have another line up here, line them up, or I might want to put a strip of lace along the top. Uh, anyway, what I do know is that these are shutters. These can be shutters, so I'm going to now cut them in half again. And I'm going to glue them on so that there's a join there for shutters. Okay, I'm just going to ink around the edge and these are going to be my shutters. Okay, I'm going to glue them on now. This is quite fun, putting my Mediterranean summer house shutters on. So the term of summer house could mean anything, couldn't it? It could be just a, a house where you go and stay in the summer. It could mean something where you have it in the garden could be a cottage, it could be um, more of a, it could be a traditional wooden summer house that may have been in a stately home in a garden in England or somewhere else, a pavilion style, somewhere where they do the cricket, it could be anything really, it's whatever your interpretation is of a house, it can be any house that you like but perhaps if you want to bring in a more summery feel, you could add some flowers or a decorative lace with a little bit of um, something maybe like butterflies, that sort of thing. Something you see in the summer. And if these go on higgledy-piggledy, that's quite good. So I'm just gluing them on if they go on higgledy-piggledy. That's only going to add to the rustic traditional notion of this maybe Mediterranean style cottage or farmhouse or fisherman's cottage. And then let's add this last one in and put the weight on them because they may pop off. This is really good strong glue though, it should be okay. That's fine. If there's a little gap there, that's okay. There we are. And then we're going to have shuttered doors as well. And I'm going to make these into doors as well. Just this Middle Eastern vibe. Really fun. Cut those in half and do the same here. These are my doors. And I'm just going to ink down the edge and lose the white edge of the cut line so that it all blends in now. I think I'm going to put an arch on the other side and I'm going to cut this one in half to give me little windows up the top there like that. And let's do shutters here as well. So these are shutters now and then I could do something in the centre there. Okay, I'm going to have a little archway here so I'm just going to take that round and down again and then ink around that and we're going to have another little one there like so that's the door and then that's the matching I don't know what that is that could be another door That bit's a little bit fiddly. There we go, and that's my windows. 
I've got a script stamp here and I thought to make the slats I might use this text script so that I could just give an impression of slats in a shutter. There's lots of ways to have a shutter but I just wondered if this might look fun. Just as a bit of interest to have the written stamp going across it. That's, that's really fun actually, I like that. I won't do it to all of them, but I'll just do it to the door. And I thought that was quite a good idea. So I'm going to do the same here. Lovely. So I'm just I'm just going to glue down this piece of paper with a flower image on it and then frame it with my shutter doors. I'll just use this scrap on the top here to give it a frame. Like a top of the door frame and then these are going to come in here match up there. All right so I've got the idea that one of these doors will open and one will be fixed so that will be fixed there but this one will be able to open that's the idea. So I'm going to stick this one down with a bit of stick glue there and then let's have a look how this is going to appear. So I want my door to line up a little bit so I'm lining the door up with the top window. Got a piece, a very small piece of decorative paper there. I've just folded that in half. This is going to create a hinge on the door. This could be scaled up. We don't have to do anything as small and minute as I'm uh, <laughs> managing to do here. Uh, but if you want to do the hinge idea, quite nice to have a a nice piece of paper to show through because you will be able to open it out so we've got that to consider so we just want to make sure that the doors will line up and then push down on that hinge and then it can open up just add that down there And that's the little door. So with a fabric glue we can add that along here and then I've got this image so I'm going to fussy cut round that and add that in. Now this could be a sticker, this could be uh, something that you found in a botanical book, this could be an image or a digital kit, it could be a label, it could be anything, it could be die cuts, it could be fussy cuts, just something to add a pop of colour and I think when you've got this blue and you're looking at Mediterranean things it's going to be really wonderful to have that bright colour red. Yeah, that will look great, that will overlap that and before I do that I'm just going to use a little black here, I'm just going to use that and sort of add in some lines for the shutters just give a suggestion here of shutter lines that they could be um, just do that just the, just the little lines there but it could be squares couldn't it let's do maybe have squares up here just give a little detail see how we like that little detail these have got squares up on the top your frame framed And we can come back and tinker with that later if we are not happy. 
Right, good. There we go. So it's coming together now. And then I'm going to stick that on. Okay, I'm going to use a nice slick of this Yoohoo glue and stick that down there. I want it to overlap. Fill in that bottom space there. So that is coming together really nicely and that is the outside of the of the house. I think we want some sort of die cut or something up there. And we go up a bit higher and then I'll put a little bit of trim down the bottom there. I'm just going to add that in there. And a little bit of ink around the edge and then what I think I'll do is I'm going to line this with the other piece of paper and then I will hide sort of that bumpy bit there and give myself a nice inside to work on. So I think that's what I'll do. Okay, so I've used my stick glue and I am using this as the liner to go inside here. And we will make this fit and work. <laughs> now I've got a nice surface to work on. Coffee stain could be writing space. We could just do a little collage, doesn't have to be anything massive and just be a bit of fun. And this is going to go off to the swap partner. So just check that everything is stuck at the top and I could go around with the sewing machine if I want to as well. That would make it fun. So I'm just going to trim off here, which will just bring in my house ever so slightly. And that is only going to add to the entry take that off at the sides. Okay, I found some book page that I have cut out of a botanical book and I'm going to just stick these down here to create some more um, florals and I think it's lovely because they've got the white background and I think that they're just going to come and add something. So I'm just going to add that in with an art glitter glue, be able to get into the narrow pieces that I have fussy cut out of a book page. And this was a find from a charity shop. The book was a vintage style botanical gardening book and it looks at wildflowers. Um, so I just think that that's lovely. That's going to come and live there. And what I'll do is I'll just get my craft knife and I, oh actually I think that might even fold down so we'll just glue those down wild daisy here going to have, I think I've got this which might look fun up there, link in with a little yellow and just add something so like a vine or some flowers that are up in the roof and that'll just give that bit of detail that is missing up on the top of this house and I think this is all I'm going to go and do, I should just ink round the edges if they need it and I'm calling this done and then I can decorate the inside with a little collage on a, another session but I have thoroughly enjoyed putting this together it's been really relaxing having a little go putting together this house in my quiet crafting space so I do encourage you to have a little go how would you decorate your house? Whether you would use a slow stitch, a patchwork, you really can use anything you want. But I've got the botanicals going on there. And of course, I have found this little fish. And I think this could be a fisherman's cottage somewhere on the Mediterranean Sea. Somewhere really lovely where we all might like to go and visit. So I'm just going to add in this fish which comes from Klee Black Creations um, summer labels I believe or if not has summer labels then it is 
her monochrome labels. So have a look at Klee Black Creations on Etsy for some really interesting labels that just seem to sneak into a project and bring it all together. And I think that that just adds a little whimsical touch there of bringing that little fish to this wonderful summer holiday cottage or some place that you might like to visit when you are on your travels so there we go and then we have the back there and I think that that's great and what I'll do is probably put some more crackle paste up on the top and just bring a bit more texture to areas where I haven't got anything and I think that's how I will tackle it, that and I will leave a picture at the end so thank you very much for watching I hope that this was inspirational for you and that you will join me again in the next video and we can see how this would look in a journal and we can have some more fun and think about how we might like to tackle either the inside or another house project. Okay, thank you very much for joining me. Do please like and subscribe to the channel. I'm Melanie and above everything else, just slow down and make crafting time for you. Bye bye now.